Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Janak. We're looking at the week of September the 14th to the 20th, 2020. We're still in the star sign of Virgo, so that's going to be the star sign we will be starting with when we look at the star signs. Before we look at the star signs, we will be looking at the overall energy for the week ahead. Let's have a look what the week of September the 14th to the 20th of September 2020 will bring us. Okay, we got the polar bear and the heron. This is a week overall energy, which means for all of us. <laughs> this is a week where anything that hasn't healed yet will come to the forefront. This is a week where uh, a lot of people will feel vulnerable, to say the least, and we'll obviously have more when we go to the individual star signs, but we also have the heron, which is a bird that stands in the water on one leg, and when the fish comes, he goes, thank you. So, even though overall energy says we are uh, this is a week um, where we can allow ourselves to be vulnerable, but um, even if we don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable, we are. This is a week where healing is really in the forefront, but because of the energy of the heron, um, opportunities will come our way, also healing will come our way, and the trick is to not fight it. Fight it. Whatever wants out, allow it to leave. If you have a little breakdown, um, tears are sacred medicine, just let it all happen. It's all for the better, right? So that's the overall energy is for all of us to allow ourselves um, to be um, vulnerable and heal what can be healed or begin to heal, if that makes sense. And... Um, New opportunities will come our way because as we all let go, we make space for new beginnings. Right? So that's the overall energy for the week ahead. And now we're looking at the first star sign, which is Virgo. There we go. Let's see what we got for Virgo. Virgos got the panther and the coyote. For Virgos, it is important this week to try to not hide your emotions. Right? Don't, don't hide your feelings. Allow things to happen. And if you feel, um, you know, you, you feel less capable of conducting yourself um, and um, even protecting yourself, you have the coyote which is a scavenger, and the idea is that there's always enough to go around for you, okay? So in other words, whatever happens this week, allow yourself to express it, don't hide your feelings, and you will be perfectly fine, you will be fully protected, um, and there's always enough to go around. So even if you feel, you know, I, I, need, I need a break this week, and you do less, um, allow yourself to do just that. That was Virgo going into Libra. Libra have the snake and the kingfisher. That's actually quite powerful because the snake is the animal of, um, or the, the symbolism of um, protection and healing. And so since it is a week where we had the polar bear earlier saying, telling us, you know, we are quite vulnerable right now. The snake is saying, you're on the, on the way to getting better and stronger already. And you have the kingfisher, who together with the hummingbird is the bird that can work on any tree, no matter how crooked the tree is. And the crooked tree represents your life. And the kingfisher is just going, <coughs> what that really means is you will be just fine there's no implications that your healing 
um, crisis, for want of a better word, um, will lead to a massive um, blowout or a massive breakdown. And even if it did occur, you will pick up your life just where you left it. So that, that's really uh, powerful for Libra. Going into Scorpio, there we go. Scorpio, you have the Great Spirit and the Beaver. The Great Spirit is basically really amazing and powerful um, medicine man, for want of a better word. And he's telling you, I'm right here for Scorpios. I'm right here. You have the beaver, which is the builder of dams and the builder of bridges. So the, the analogy is, or the symbolism is, this week, you're fully protected by your guides, right? So you can allow yourself to, to be reflective and be a little uh, more inward. And it's important for you to not burn any bridges this week um, and just tell people uh, to back off a little um, if they don't take no for an answer because um, the energy that I'm getting for Scorpio is that um, many Scorpios out there, you, you give us. And when you give, people take. It does not necessarily make them bad people, it just makes them opportunists. And uh, some people just need to be put in their place so that you can and you have that space uh, for your personal healing, if that makes sense. I have to say this before we're moving on to Sagittarius, uh, for all of us. This is not a week, energetically speaking, what I'm feeling is, it's not the most depressing week of all. It's just where the healing needs to happen, the pain needs to leave. But it will not be a 24-7 thing, it will not be, you know, the whole seven days where you feel like I've had it <laughs> right it's just important to allow these moments to occur and to happen so it's not a moment of of major depression if that makes sense and if you are one of those people and we have that here obviously with, with any given star sign that are deeper then you know your healing will also be deeper and will therefore feel in many ways more severe, maybe a little bit more traumatic, um, but as always, um, you will get through it, okay? Going into Sagittarius now. Ooh, got an extra card. <laughs> okay. This is a week, uh, or, or the, the the symbols that I get for Sagittarius are symbols that sound confusing, if that makes sense. You have the Dancer of Lies, the Spirit of Initiation and the Dancer of Fear. The Dancer of Lies means that in your surroundings, in your environment, not everybody really is on your side, even though they pretend they are, if that makes sense. And um, equally, for people, uh, for, for Sagittarius who are great in convincing themselves that things are different to how they actually are. Stop lying to yourself, right? If things are absolutely horrendous, now is the time to tackle them. Because you have the spirit of initiation, how this works is we have all these cards and because they gave us an extra card, which means we have three, the one in the middle is the one we pay the most attention to. And the one in the middle, your, your spirit guide in the middle, for the week of September the 14th to the 20th, 2020, is the spirit of initiation, which means if you look at things for how they truly are, this, the, the initiation that they're talking about, that the guy's talking about, just means like that you're waking up from a, from a deep slumber. But you also have the dancer of fear. Dancing, uh, dancing is a weird term that they use because it means pussyfooting, it means um, being unsure, it also means trying to adapt, trying to fit in, if that makes sense, but you have the dancer of fear. So once you wake up from um, maybe not seeing reality quite as direct um, as you will this week, 
don't go into panic, don't go into fear, um, don't go into worry, you can handle it. Okay, that was Sagittarius going into Capricorn. Okay, and uh, before we go into Capricorn, um, a lot of people um, have texted me, commented how much they enjoyed the video that I did with uh, Jane Arnold. And I personally um, always enjoy working with people. And um, so, with a little luck, <laughs> the next two uh, energy and star sign readings, reading episodes will be with guests um, scheduled to um, do readings with me so far are Jane Arnold again and my friend Emma Holland. I have done um, a video with Emma Holland I think two or three years ago and we're meeting up this week um, to continue recording. Fingers crossed it'll all happen. So just to um, just so you know. Anyway, going into Capricorn, you have the seahorse and the swan. Two animals that are water related. Water is renewal but water is also an element of needing space. The seahorse's message is that you're quite versatile. Uh, there's loads of stuff that you can do even if you don't think you can do it. But the seahorse is also known for being super sensitive. Um, statistics that I read years ago when I had my um, animal rights radio show still, um, which was called Wild Time then and ran for seven, seven years. Um, eight years actually, sorry, and we had 500 shows in total. The What I read um, when I interviewed people and, and did my research was that about 90% of seahorses don't make it in captivity. That, not, that doesn't mean you drop dead tomorrow. It just means like when you are, if you are one of those people that feel trapped, trapped and blocked and not much is going on and you feel like you're stuck, that's where it is important for you to realize that you're not a seahorse. <laughs> it just means that you might feel stuck and you may have trouble working things out, which is why your other um, spirit guide for this week is the swan. And the swan is a water bird, which means he has to be waterproof before he can swim, which means you are already waterproof. The analogy basically means like, if you feel very stuck, remember that you're capable of so much more and you will be fine. What I'm getting as well, um, energetically speaking, is that um, for uh, Capricorns is to pay attention to flesh and blood family members, so to speak. Um, family interactions, family dynamics, they all play a role or can play a role in how held back and how stuck you might feel. I'm not saying that in some cases it's, it's probably uh, the relationship or, or, or just the way the world is at the moment, right? I'm not, so don't hear this wrong. This is never a hundred percent, if that makes sense, because uh, my, my belief is that the people who need to see this will find the video, if that makes sense. But my, my gut feeling and the imagery that I get from my guides is um, for Capricorns to look at um, your flesh and blood family and see what elements there are where you need to realize, you know what, I don't have to explain myself any longer. I am my own person and I do what I feel I have to do. Okay, going into Aquarius. Hmm. You have the rum and the tiger. Aquarius, that means for you, this, this is still a week, you know, where we all feel a bit vulnerable, but you, you have got a kick-ass energy this week. Because the rum is, um, some people see, see the rum as, as an animal that is being sacrificed, but it is religion where this is happening. And so, um, in my world, even though I work with Native American guides and with animal guides, Religion has really no, no space, no place in it, because religion is very controlling, can be very controlling. And um, so I'm not against people who believe. All I'm saying is that my guides do not follow any religion. And so what the RAM stands for in this case 
is to be an animal that is on top of the cliff, very narrow, sometimes very steep, and doesn't fall one bit, which means you are growing and you're getting stronger and even things that feel difficult, you'll manage. And then, it gets better, <laughs> uh, Aquarius, you have the tiger. And the tiger has an awful lot of stamina. And that's what you need to remember this week. You get through stuff when you push through it. So you can be strong and you can be as strong as your soul knows you truly are. Okay, uh, moving into Pisces, which is my star sign. Let's have a look what we got for us Pisceans, I think it's called. <laughs> okay, remember the overall energy was that we are quite vulnerable and that healing needs to happen and is going to happen. And us Pisces, we have the horse and the snowy owl. And the horse is the animal that says, and this sounds a bit weird, do not go back to situations that didn't work. Okay, really important. You have the horse. The horse is telling you without running away for good, if that makes sense, running away from your life, you need to make space for new beginnings. And the snowy owl is basically the animal that says, because it is one of those animals that lives where opportunities are scarce, and you know, um, that at times this week, our, our, when I say our vision, because obviously I'm, I'm a Pisces, um, might be a bit blurred, we might follow or want to follow our heart and not our mind. And what the guides are saying is, remember, oftentimes it is very unlikely that situations change if they haven't changed in a long time, no matter how, how, how much you, know, you wish it to be the case. So the message for us Pisces is, Stop for a little bit. Don't go back in the situations that haven't worked so far and that are clearly not working and allow yourself to move away from it, which is also where the healing then, then happens. And um, watch out for, <laughs> uh, for, that, for that heart that you have. That is like, oh, well, it is nice, you, you know, going back to, to things that are familiar. This kind of stuff comes to mind. Not a good idea. And as always, the promise is we get through this and I have the feeling we really will. Okay, that was Pisces going into Aries. Just need a sip. And another one. <laughs> Aries, you have the river otter and the rabbit. The river otter is basically the animal that is holding hands as they fall asleep. And the rabbit is the animal that tells you, you have no idea how deep the rabbit hole is. So you combine it and it means that the people that are closest to you and the people that you are closest with, these are the people with which to explore the world, with which to explore new opportunities, completely new things, without going into worries and fear. So this is a week where uh, for um, Aries it's important not to go things alone. Now I hear you already say like, yeah, but I'm single, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that you, you can reach out to your guides. Most of us are lucky enough, most people are lucky enough to have someone that is a good friend. And in this week, September the 14th through 20th, 2020, it makes sense for Aries to have a conversation where you can bounce off someone, if that makes sense. 
all right um, i also have the feeling that for some of you aries it, it might mean that you have someone close or semi-close in another city maybe some of you even in another country and should the conversations go into uh, like um why don't you come over here and we figure it out because you have the rabbit what the rabbit is saying that's actually not a bad idea so i'm not trying to persuade you to 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 leave <laughs> and run to the hills it's just what i'm getting from the guides and what i'm getting from the energy of the animal guides is to to not be afraid and try out new things and um don't overthink um maybe even confide in someone about what it is you really would like to do and then bounce off of uh, someone okay that was aries going into taurus <laughs> Tauruses take things easy. Steady. <laughs> you have the bald eagle and the turkey. The eagle is basically the symbolism is to say you see things coming from a mile away. Nothing gets past you. So you don't have to worry about oh my god there's bad news coming or any of these things. You see situations as well just for what they are and because the the um, symbolism is the eagle which means you know you can see your food or the eagle can see his food from a mile away you're quite safe in anything you do here's the rub you have the turkey and the message of the turkey is that sometimes you can be quite misunderstood I remember because I have um, people in my family who are Tauruses. Um, um, I don't think it's called Tauruses. Jane told me. I think it's not. But I have forgotten. <laughs> Taurians, I think it was. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Right? I'm, I'm a foreigner, so I don't have to be 100% correct here in my, <laughs> in my language skills. If that makes sense. The point is that the turkey is oftentimes the symbol for... For being misunderstood and so don't read too much into situations observe and trust that what your gut feels is going to happen okay I was short and sweet for Taurus because I'm not getting more and now we're moving into Gemini here we go Gemini you have the red fox and the black bear. The overall energy is about letting healing happen. And Gemini, you are really asked this week to throttle back a little and really allow for personal space to be in the forefront of your week so that you can allow yourself to finally this is what i'm getting finally break through into this i'm letting this all go and the red fox is telling you you you're an old soul and you will be just fine it's just because you sometimes don't really look at the need to slow down that's where sometimes you can go wrong so for Gemini's, please, you're an old soul, you have been in many situations that you all survived in different lifetimes, so to speak, or that you learned from at least in different lifetimes. And here you are again being an old soul, you will be fine, but allow yourself to be vulnerable this week, right? Going into Cancerians. Let's see what Cancerians have got. Positive, positive energy for Cancerians. This week you have the Shaman of Purification and the Shaman of Stars. Which means this is the week to be vulnerable. This is the week to heal. But for the Cancerians, it is actually cleansing that's going to happen. The letting go of things and the trust that things 
can improve and are improving because you have the shaman of stars which means there's so much more out there but you need to just trust and don't cling to things you cannot control right short and sweet for cancer it's actually quite a positive high energy uh, for cancerians in the week september the 14th to the 20th 2020 moving to the last star sign of the week which is leo let's have a look at leo leo you got the elk and smoke which basically means you will you will have to be steadfast you will need to be firm and um, make sure people understand where you're coming from and and you know where you where you stand and smoke basically is in combination just means like you know you you let people know where you're standing and it will clear the air so it will be a week where where for some leos it might be a bit more forceful where you have to say like oi <laughs> right um have to express yourself in a, in a bit more firm manner um, but it will clear the air and that it in itself is what allows the healing for you to happen so like i said it's not a really bad week it's just a week where it would be a mistake to not allow the vulnerability that is sort of in the air um, to take hold because vulnerability leads to cleansing cleansing oftentimes leads to to real healing and renewed strengths and um, new beginnings so you know for all of you out there um, let it happen and it's all good and i see you very soon bye bye now